this is the front left driver's door. I'm going to uh, undo that screw and take the panel off and remove the door panel. The panel has now been taken off and we can just see the two screws above the lever there will undo uh, to remove the panel. As you can see, I've now got the door panel off. I must say it was a very good fit. Quite tricky to prise off, quite frightening, but it did come off. Just making a note of where all of the cables go and the layout of the wiring, just so we can put it back exactly as we found it. I have to uh, now tear back or cut back some of the lining on the door. I've managed to break the bonding on, on this uh, flap of door lining. And inside you can see two of the four nuts for the uh, power mirror assembly. It's a 13 millimeter spanner that you're going to need to remove those. As a tip, I suggest you leave the bottom right hand nut till last because it's the easiest one to take off and you're going to need to support the weight of the arm at the same time as undoing the nut, which is quite tricky. Maybe you can get a friend to help, but uh, it's the, the weight of the arm is considerable. This is the mirror assembly. Again, we've got the little rubbery gasket thing. It's more like polystyrene. Tease it off somehow. Sealed for, in this case, over 10 years. No one's ever looked inside. So don't know what we're going to find. I'm going to need two hands to do this, so uh, I'll come back to you when I've got it off. Now, I've managed to tease out the gasket. And on this assembly, on the driver's side, we've got some little plastic clips used to secure in which they're on, they're on the verge of breaking off. They've obviously perished. But this gasket is substantially a better fit than my uh, right-hand side one. I'm not quite sure what this uh, little reinforcement bar is on the, um, on the gasket. It's obviously some kind of stiffening to hold it in place. Now we can see the part number of the assembly. Again, there's water inside, just as on the other side. And lots of evidence of rust, perhaps more so on this side than the um, passenger side. So we'll get, get busy and uh, remove this motor module. Note the uh, position of the wire this time and the um, cable tie that's holding it in place. I'm going to see if I can remove this whilst uh, videoing. Now, just as before, the actual motor assemblies come loose what I had to do on the other side was to move the arm to get it off but in this particular case it's loose I think I just need to cut that cable tie there we go the cable tie has been cut so now we can feed some of this cable through I'm just going to put my hands down for a second while I do this as you can see there's a hell of a lot of uh, rust inside here more so than on the other side and you can just see the um, brown and grey wires going into the motor just as before. I'm going to put the um, camera down now for a second and just um, get this uh, apart. Something I didn't discuss in detail before are these little tulip kind of connectors. They do actually mate onto um, some little tiny spades on the motor PCB. Uh, not to the motor. These go to the PCB and then the PCB plugs into the motor. So again, this little plastic retaining clip has perished and broken off. I didn't do that. It was already broken. The little grommets that are on there are quite good at actually sealing and holding the wire in place. But we will repair that just like we did uh, last time and put it all back together. But as you can see, there's clearly evidence of a lot of corrosion. Again, around the swivel arm. Again on the sprocket, that looks heavily corroded and we'll continue as before. I think we can clearly see now on the video what the actual part number on this one is. Um, it's important to keep a record I found. How I wished I'd remembered that when I uh, rewired the mirrors. It may not have been me that got the wiring crossed over but as a footnote if you cross over the wires on the mirror motors then the feedback circuit doesn't work correctly and the power folds don't work. Something that is worth remembering. If your power folds don't work, it could be because your mirrors aren't homing and the mirrors are faulty. Certainly affects the retract. So uh, I've taken off plastic wire retaining clip so that the wires are free and now we've got to poke these up the core of the, of the motor. Something I don't like doing because it's as dirty as hell. 
we'll poke those up there and then push that cable through and slide this motor assembly down. My goodness, look at the mess that's inside there. Pretty, pretty badly corroded and contaminated. Not good. Here is the actual motor drive. You can see it's um, pretty bad. We're going to take that plastic cover off next and have a quick look inside. The PCB just easily comes away, but you can see there is some cor corrosion on the motor pads. I'm not sure if that's actually a connection or just some grounding points. I think maybe a noise suppression, I don't know, some kind of screening. Because that's not actually the connections to the motor. The, the connections to the motor are those two little gold-plated connectors in, at the back of the motor just by my thumbnail. And you can see on the PCB where they... They actually, they actually connect to these points here. So that's looking good. I think that, that'll all work fine. To, to get the motor out, we've got to release this little phosphor bonds clip off the side. And be careful, there is a ball bearing just at the end of that motor shaft. Don't lose that. Using my little pointy tool, just underneath the motor there, that, that clip just, it is, there's no great strain on it. It just pops out. So we're going to take that motor off in just one second. So the clip just came off and you can see on the motor in that little, it looks like a hole uh, that's at the bottom of the thread. That is a magnet. And there's another one on the other side, which I think is used by that little, um, probably Hall effect sensor in the middle of that PCB. I presume to monitor the shaft rotations to make sure that it's moving. I'm not quite sure why they need to do that because the actual uh, drive circuit is a six amp circuit with the current feedback so they know how much current is taking but obviously they feel the need to actually count revolutions or do something clever not quite sure what that circuit does guess we'll never know unless we want to destroy one and find out what the chips are but we'll leave that for another day if someone wants to send me a broken one i'll happily see if i can find out and draw the circuit diagram but at the moment it will remain a mystery <laughs> probably didn't make it very clear before but you can see these are little plastic um, pins that have been melted over during manufacture to, to, to hold the assembly together and there's another two um, either side of the motor shaft so we've got one two three four of those um, and what I'm going to do is use a Dremel with like a round cutter that just nicely takes those tops off and then we're going to put uh, small self-tapping screws in if I've got any more that is. In case you're curious the motor did come out it's a, it was a little bit tricky I think it had bonded itself to the gear wheel a little bit so a little bit of pressure here and there and just gently wag it out. I'm not sure if my ball bearing is I can, I can, I can see that there's a ball bearing at the bottom of that hole but uh, it may be difficult for you to see but there is a bearing there. Here's a close-up of my Dremel, which I have to say is a marvellous tool. This is a battery, a lithium battery unit with a spare battery that charges very quickly. So if you run down, you can always have a spare. There's a close-up of the little tool that I use. It's a ball-shaped cutter, um, which is just ideal for nipping those little heads off. It never occurred to me to actually show too much of this, but you can see that now I've dremeled away most of the plastic there. Essentially, when you get through the dome part of the, the plastic, it sort of spins off. I'm now going to drill those holes out with something like a one millimeter drill. I'll let you know what that is in a moment. But I'm going to do it now whilst the assembly is, uh, before the assembly has been cleaned. We got rid of all the plastic and swarf and everything because it just gets everywhere. And you don't want to actually recontaminate your motor drive afterwards. So we'll um, do the drilling now and I'll show you what that looks like in a second. It's a one millimeter drill and you're going to go all the way through. If I can show you that all the way through, come out the other side. We can always open that hole out a little bit more if we want to, if the screws don't fit. But a, a one mil drill seems about right to me. I've now drilled out the holes. There's uh, six to do all in all. You can just see daylight through that one if I catch the light. There you go. It goes all the way through the case. Now I'm going to try and prise that case apart. 
I'm not sure if I can uh, actually do this whilst holding the camera, but you can see I've got in there with a, a small scalpel knife and the case is, is actually going to come apart. Put up a bit of a fight. Here we go and voila. Just like the other side. Pretty messy. Pretty messy. But now we know what to do. There's the little ball bearing which we're going to carefully remove with a pair of tweezers and also hopefully show the positions of the worm gear. Yep, we've got that. I'll also show you There's the motor. You can see there's two little magnets either side there. I'm not going to take those out. That that's actually looks like a fossil bronze or a brass gear. It looks it looks okay. We're going to clean that motor up, of course, get rid of all of that corrosion. I'm going to use um, a fiberglass pen just to um, scratch off that rust. It'll be all right. That'll be fine. You can just see the ball bearing that I removed by the screw there, which I've put in a little tray. And I've just pulled out the... Uh, worm gears and drive gear assembly out. I've left that as one piece for the moment. Uh, I don't think there's a left and right on those worm gears, but um, we'll leave it together and we'll put it in a little storage tray. Now you can see, faced with the same problem, how to get that star washer off. And I'm going to use my pointy tool just to tease it off. Try not to strain it too much because if you bend those lugs out too much it doesn't want to go back on I wanted to try and show you the the motion of getting this off now I've got a little pair of bent nose pliers there if you get in behind it and go round that star wash you can hear it click as you gradually walking it up the shaft I'm trying not to overdo it because last time I had to bend those lugs back in to make them grip so we'll keep working at it and I'll come back to you in a bit Finally, after about 15 minutes of gently walking that up the shaft, uh, you can see that everything's come apart now. That sort of pretty gunky, very messy. I couldn't get that other gear drive out. I don't maybe because it was under pressure. I don't know. And perhaps now I've loosened it all off, it will come out. So we're going to carry on, try cleaning all this up all the time. It's very difficult. You can't take the parts off stick them in a bath or an ultrasonic clean or anything because there's just no way of um, working with that cable up the middle so it's all going to be done by hand again there's just a mass of contaminants in there took a bit of leverage to actually get some rotation on that and i still can't get that little worm gear off but we'll keep working at it it's going to come apart so right the drive sprocket i'm going to call it as you can see, I've, I've been cleaning this for a good half an hour now, and there's still signs of contamination. And this, in this particular case, I think the it's a die-cast part, and it has become quite badly corroded. And I think it's important that those splines are actually smooth to operate, because the clutch mechanism slides up and down those. If that doesn't happen, it just it'll just get stuck. I'm going to try and see if I can cleaning up with something like a brass wire brush or something on a rotary brush on a Dremel just to see if I can get rid of those last bits of corrosion. As you can see the surface is very badly pitted and there's still a little bit of corrosion on there and I say I've been working at this for some time you can see there's a I've got a little bath of isopropyl alcohol here just trying to um, get some kind of degrease and I mean it's, it's, it's a lot better and it'll probably be work but um, I don't want to be going here again, so uh, let's um, work at it a little bit better. I've had a good go at trying to clean this drive sprocket thing. It's pretty badly corroded. It looks like a die cast part that's been probably a galvanised or something, and I've I've gone round as many. Every time you look at it, you find another place where you just haven't been, but. That's as good as it's going to be, I think. You know, there's probably one or two little bits I might just try cleaning off, but that's as far as I can go. I think anything else is just a waste of time. Some of these surfaces are no longer smooth and, and, and are, are well pitted. It's probably been stuck in a state of corrosion for quite some time. 
and having a bit of electrical power on there that might seep or get in there, it starts electrolysis and then you start corroding just like a, a marine engine. You know, the salts are just eating away, particularly in the English weather. We'll continue cleaning it just a little bit more and then we'll we'll work our way down all of the all of the parts are on a, a captive on on the cable. So the best way is to just do them I would imagine is that's just to do them sequentially, just as as you come to them one at a time and then just keep going. The level of contamination is quite phenomenal. I mean, that little pressure plate there is really, really baked in. It's, I'm, I'm prising it off slowly, slowly, but it's um, very heavily baked in. It's, it's incredible. This is the left-hand side power mirror assembly taken apart. There's a circlip and a washer. And this is uh, video is just to show you the amount of debris that's got into this this swivel joint. I have actually cleaned up a lot of the the mess out of here, but it's still dirty. It's hard to imagine how you, how anyone could actually manage to design something that accumulated so much rust inside. It's it's, it's just unbelievable. Here I've cleaned the drive spigot, the two halves of the body, the spring washer, the gears and the washers inside. Unfortunately mine were very badly contaminated. I'm not quite sure they're ever going to function properly. Some of the surfaces are no longer slide. If you look at the drive spigot you can see there's some heavy pitting in the casting and, and everything has to slide up and down so there could be some amounts of grease in there I suppose just to give it a bit of help, but not on the actual dry face, which is this dimpled ring, which engages in the dimples and the, in the gear, as you can see, effectively forming a slip clutch. We'll just give it a try. I may just try soaking these. I, ha I happen to have an ultrasonic cleaner, and I might just put these in there for 20 minutes and just, just see what it... Um, if it helps, probably won't make any difference, but it's worth a try. Anything to um, to clean out all the little nooks and crannies in these plastic um, assemblies. There we go. Here you can see I've got the star washer back on. May not be perfectly square. You can see that in essence it's all there. It's quite tight to turn. I think I mentioned this in my last video. You just can't believe you can actually um, drive this with tiny gears. I had to put quite a big screwdriver inside that sprocket there um, to move it, but it does move. Unlike when we when we uh, first took it apart, it does move. And um, we're just going to carry on putting all of the gears and and uh, parts back together. <laughs> After many hours of carefully cleaning, greasing, drilling small holes, you can see I put two tiny little holes in the bottom of the plastic cover there, just drain holes, uh, on the theory that if water gets inside it can just drain out. This has been meticulously cleaned, you know, every, every time you touch it you find something else that, that may be a bit contaminated, but it goes so far and I think this is as good as it's going to get. Regarding greasing, I've put lots of grease in there on the basis and the thoughts that if contamination is going to get in there, I'd, I'd rather there be grease in there than contamination. It was filled with contamination. So you might as well put grease where the contamination is going to get. At least that way it, it, you're slowing it down. So um, that's the theory. It does work. I've just tried it on the bench power supply so it does rotate. Um, we're going to take it to the vehicle now and see if it actually works. Okay, we're going to test the um, power fold. It's always a great feeling when you've achieved something, so here we go. Extend. No problem. Retract. No problem. Other side. Extend, no problem. 
Retract. No problem. Wonderful. Fantastic. Thank you for watching this video. Please give it a thumbs up, share and subscribe. Oh, don't forget the alert bell.